As you may know, I send a lot of postcards. I can send about 100 postcards a month, so I can get rid of postcards pretty quickly just by actually sending them away. But sometimes they just sit around and languish. Like my Daily Nugget postcards. Of all things, you would think that my Daily Nugget postcards would go really fast. The thing is, people love the Daily Nugget emails, people seem to like the Daily Nugget book, people don't love the Daily Nugget postcards. Um, I've never gotten any real great feedback about them. People don't hate them, um, but they don't love them. And then I don't want to send them out because I don't want to send out mediocre postcards, especially if I made them because then I feel mediocre. Um, but, but I did make them and I don't want to throw them away. But all they do is pitifully sit around in the postcard section in my room and take up space and make me feel bad. So I'm gonna drop them into the recycling bin. Um, sometimes with things like postcards, I think, um, oh, they'll make great scrap papers. I have all the scrap papers I need, so I don't need any more scrap papers, and nobody wants these mediocre postcards, so they're going into the recycling bin. Um, I also threw into the recycling bin this very tragic box of a thousand postcards that I recently ordered and um, the reason that they're going away is because I ordered them on the wrong paper so they're very flimsy and they're not really postcard worthy. Um, again, I thought about saving them for scrap paper but I really don't need a thousand pieces of rejected postcard scrap paper. I don't go through that much scrap paper these days. Um, I don't think anybody does. So that was a painful decision. It was like throwing 50 bucks into the recycling bin, but those are the painful lessons you have to learn sometimes to pay really, really close attention to all of the details before you hit that order button. Okay, so here's a big problem area for me postcards. My main hobby is mailing things. I love to mail things. And for the past 10 years, the main thing I've been mailing is postcards. I mostly send them through a thing called post crossing. When you start with post crossing, you're only allowed to have five postcards traveling out in the world at any given time. As people register your postcards, you're slowly allowed to send more postcards. Every 50 postcards you send, you're allowed to send another one, and eventually they cut you off at 100 postcards. Well, you guessed it. I'm in the 100 postcard limit club, which means that when I'm rocking and rolling, I'm sending out more than 100 postcards a month. During these times, I can easily justify bringing more postcards into my home, but when I'm not sending lots of postcards, they can accumulate fast. Enter the container method. The container method says that everything has a container, and it's the container that determines how much of a thing you get to keep. When I first started with post crossing and I had a five postcard limit for what I could send out, it was pretty easy. I just bought small quantities of postcards and kept them in the little baggie from the store. There was no need for a special postcard box. But over time, I started to enjoy fulfilling people's specific postcard preferences, so I had extra postcards and needed a box. I started with a little box and eventually moved to what I thought was the biggest box I would ever need, this big blue box. But as you know, I travel, and I like to write postcards on the plane. So I bought this pack of beautiful vintage San Francisco postcards that came in this handy metal tin. Perfect. Once the postcards were used up, I kept the tin and still use it for taking postcards with me on the plane. The postcards that came with the tin are so great that I ended up buying them again, and now I have two tins. Awesome! Never hurts to have a backup. I can use this other tin for stickers that I sometimes use to decorate my postcards. And eventually, I got another one. 
Why would I get rid of this third tin? It's a perfectly great postcard holder. You can never have too many postcard holders. And then when I went to Washington, D.C., I found this great set of D.C. postcards in a metal box. How could I let go of this box? It's slightly bigger than the San Francisco tins, so it holds a slightly larger sized postcard, which is incredibly handy. And now I have four metal postcard boxes, and I'm not sure what's inside any of them at any given moment. Funny story, last time I was at the airport, I got stopped at TSA and the guy opened all of my metal postcard boxes and went through every postcard. He was pretty impressed and said, wow, these are great. Where do you find them? Anyway, back to the big box. The big box overflowed, so I found a random smaller box. And then another box. And then another box. And then another box. And then I got a small bookshelf to keep the postcards that came in box sets, to keep those organized. And then one of my pen pals passed away, and her mom sent me all of her unsent postcards, which I neatly organized into basically a postcard briefcase. And it's too much. So today, I'm decluttering a bunch of postcards. As I'm looking through these postcards, I realize there are quite a few that I don't even like at all. For example, I really hate postcards that are just quotes. Also, people often give me postcards as gifts, which I like, but sometimes it's too many postcards of a theme that I don't like. So last night, I posted some of these onto my Post Crossing Facebook group, and someone immediately chimed in and wanted all of these quotes postcards. I was ready to put them into recycling, but now I get to mail them to someone who actually wants them. And my goal now is to eliminate at least one of the overflow boxes and keep a strict limit on no more postcards into the house unless they fit into the existing containers. And get rid of a couple of these metal cases. So when it comes to using the container method, choose your container and stick to that limit. Don't keep adding containers. Okay, here's another problem spot in my mailing supplies category. Tiny envelopes. Once upon a time, I found this really cute box for storing tiny envelopes. It's perfect, compact, unobtrusive, and I'm unlikely to ever even use up all of these tiny envelopes. But somehow, I keep accumulating more tiny envelopes. Sometimes, I think it's because I buy small thank you cards and stuff like that, and then I must be putting them into packages or with other letters where I don't need the little envelope that came with the card. But I can't throw away the little envelope, so I save it. So here's another box of little envelopes. And here's another one. And here's a whole stack of small envelopes that I must have picked up off of the free table a few years ago. There's no way I'm going to use all these small envelopes. I don't think anyone will use them. It's time to say goodbye and toss these into the recycling bin and promise to only keep and save as many tiny envelopes as can fit in the original designated tiny envelope box. Postal stuff is weirdly emotional for me, so I'm going to have to interrupt today's postal theme with just some random stuff from the kitchen. Here's a tiny frying pan for just one egg. Actually, it's an egg poacher. I haven't used it for many years, probably because I'm not particularly fond of poached eggs. It was one of the very first things I purchased when I moved into my first studio apartment. I was an aspiring minimalist and also could only really afford to eat one egg at a time, so I thought it would be super cool and funny to own a tiny frying pan that was so small that you could only cook one egg at a time. Now, even though I still mostly just cook for myself, I usually eat two eggs at a time. So that makes this little pan even less useful. Farewell, tiny pan. We had some good times. Random plastic utensils from takeout. I'm usually pretty good about avoiding these in the first place, but somehow they enter the kitchen and I don't throw them away. 
I just need to throw them away because I never, ever, ever use them. I don't like the texture, but wouldn't they be great to put in my backpack for when I go to the airport or somewhere in case I can't find convenient spoons and forks? No, it wouldn't. You know why? Because this is what's in my backpack. I'm actually a spork kind of guy. I know what you're thinking. This spork looks pretty flimsy. It won't last long. Well, I'm even prepared for that because I'm the proud owner of a tactical spork. It even has a decent plastic knife inside of it. So decent, in fact, that I have to remember to take the tactical spork out of my backpack when I go to the airport because they are specifically forbidden by the TSA, even though the little knife is plastic. Anyway, goodbye plastic cutlery. And here's three bowls that one of my brothers gave me for Christmas about 20 years ago. The brother who hates me and told me that I should just do the right thing and kill myself. So it doesn't really feel good to look at these. They are somewhat nice bowls, but their time is over. And here is a spare lid for my, uh, for my Ninja Blender Cups. I rarely use the lids at all, and at most I only use one at a time. I don't like them because I don't want to have to clean them. So if I make a smoothie, I usually just chug it right there. Smoothies don't keep very well, which is another reason that the lids are rarely used. So I'm getting rid of the spare. And here is a single popsicle maker. It brings back fun childhood memories, but as an adult, I don't eat popsicles and I never make them at home. I think that this one was really supposed to be for making a therapeutic block of ice for doing ice massage. It's so rare that I ever do ice massage. And whenever I do, guess what I use? Just a normal ice cube, because I never remember that I even have this thing. And here is a tiny voice recorder that is going to the e-waste bin today. I used to use this little guy in the office years and years ago. It was once the pinnacle of personal voice recording technology. But you know what? Nowadays, pretty much everyone is walking around with their very own personal voice recorder. I'm actually staring at mine right now. I also found the world's most useless tiny scoop, which I think went to a prebiotic supplement, and this sad plastic spatula that says Cuisinart on it. That tells me that it must have come with my food processor. I've never used this spatula in my life, probably because I have another spatula that I really like. And if that spatula broke, would I ever use this one? Nope because I like the other one, and I would probably run out and try to find another one just like it. Not like this cheap freebie that came with the machine. And here's a stack of index cards that I've been carrying around for years and years, shuffling from one office to another, to my apartment, to, because the index cards seem useful, because I think I used them at one time in my life, I don't know, maybe in high school or something, um, or maybe my son needed some for a project in high school. I don't know. But I find that I never, ever, ever use index cards. I just keep moving them around thinking they're useful. So I'm going to take a chance and get rid of the index cards. And finally, here is a set of six silicone coasters or hot plate holders or something. Since I don't really cook and I rarely put a really hot dish on the table, I don't think I've ever used these once. Um, whenever I have put a hot dish on the table, guess what I did use? Well, probably what I've always used, which is a little folded towel. I never even remember that I have these. I also never remember that I have two silicone magnetic hot plate thingies stuck to my refrigerator. Bottom line, I don't need these. And I think that's really a wrap for day 17.